Hi, I'm Seth Bobrov. I lead the product marketing efforts at PlyOps. Thanks for having us today. We're excited to talk with you about our new product, the PlyOps Extreme Data Processor, XDP for short. I'd like to highlight, we recently announced broad commercial availability on July 27th, so we're open for business. We had a huge launch event with well over 800 registrants. If you didn't catch it, the replay's on our new website at plyops.com. For those more familiar with PlyOps, you may notice our new logo and branding. We're very excited about that as well. With that being said, we believe XDP ushers in a new era of advanced compute and storage performance. Today, I'm gonna to introduce you to the PlyOps Extreme data processor and some very interesting customer use cases. And we wanna see how that can help you multiply your impact in the data center. All right, let's get going. First, a little bit about our company. Our mission is to massively accelerate the most challenging workloads, relational databases, NoSQL, analytics, AI, ML, and more. Our R&D team is in Israel, and the business team is in San Jose, California. We, beat, we built an elite team of experts in databases, flash storage, and semiconductors from across the industry and we're backed by the biggest innovators in the industry, Intel, Nvidia, SoftBank, Western Digital, Xilinx, and more. They see the same challenges as we do and the need for what PlyOps has developed. And the industry has recognized our innovation each year from 2019. Most recently, we've been included in three Gartner hype cycle reports. That's amazing for us. And I believe that shows we're at the core of, new, of a new revolution in the data center. Okay, let's take a look at some key trends and the problem PlyOps is addressing. It's not surprising that flash adoption is accelerating. NVMe SSDs are easily a thousand times faster than hard drives, but they're not being fully utilized. One reason is Moore's law is slowing. CPU, CPU performance is on pace to double every 20 years versus two years historically. Adding more cores is hitting a wall because they share the same memory and IO. We're at a point of diminishing return. The solution is to add more servers, more processing power per unit of storage. That's how we've always done it, right? but it's expensive and it's not good for our planet. Our customers tell us this is absolutely a problem today and it's getting much worse. Putting these key trends together, we see major challenges for the next wave of SSD adoption. First, the server architecture is not balanced. Adding SSDs that are a thousand times faster than hard drives is not being matched by the rest of the system. Second, software architecture is dealing with this by taking shortcuts. Storage engines are used by many applications to save data to drives. And this amplifies that data, which strains the CPU. Storage amplification, read amplification, write amplification can easily be 50 to 100 times more than needed, crushing storage and burning through flash lifespan. Third is system reliability. You never hear about RAID 5 and flash, it's just too slow. We're seeing customers deploy RAID 0, RAID 10, or other methods, but they all have big trade-offs with cost and performance. We think there's a better way. Our solution is the PlyOps Extreme Data Processor. Just as GPUs overcome processing inefficiencies to accelerate AI and advanced analytics, PlyOps XDP overcomes storage efficiencies to massively accelerate performance and dramatically lower overall infrastructure costs. XDP is delivered on a low profile PCIe card, fits in any server, accelerates any workload and works with any SSD. An important point to note here is PlyOps is not selling any flash. This is not an SSD. 
we work with your SSDs. We talk about our product in terms of these four value pillars, performance, reliability, capacity, and efficiency. From a performance perspective, 3X is easily achievable. 15X, we have several examples of that and higher. And I'll talk more about that in a minute. Reliability, we have drive fail protection. It offers RAID 5-like capabilities at twice the speed of RAID 0 during a drive rebuild. That's amazing. Capacity, through our various technologies, we let companies store up to six times more user data on, the flat, on their flash than they can with software alone. Efficiency is really about cost savings on top of everything combined, but also being able to use the lowest cost QLC and TLC flash. QLC has a lot of trade-offs in terms of performance and endurance. For us, it doesn't matter. We deliver the same performance and higher endurance with QLC than with TLC with software. Um, and that's pretty amazing too. All right, let's look into a little more detail about application scaling and our TCO advantages. <clears throat> this chart is showing what XDP can achieve when compared to software only. Also note, there's different interfaces here um, for the comparison. If you used either a block interface or a native KV interface, and I'll talk more about that in a minute. Starting with RocksDB, a standalone software key value store that's considered state-of-the-art today, many applications use it, we can deliver tens of performance improvement gains over software, over just plain RocksDB. For QLC SSDs, we know they're low cost, high capacity option. We make them 17 times faster and with higher endurance. Redis, a popular in-memory data service uses all DRAM, which we know is very expensive. We can deploy this on flash and get very high performance, nearly equivalent to DRAM, but at a much lower cost. Next, we have a few typical database examples, MySQL, MariaDB, and MongoDB. We're achieving up to 3x performance gains you know, easily on those. Um, and, and those are using the standard block interface. Uh, all right. So let's peek under the hood a little bit. Um, how do we accomplish this? Starting from the host perspective in the upper left, we have two interfaces that I kind of mentioned before to access XDP. The first one is a standard block interface, which has the broadest adoption, right? It's ubiquitous. Um, so available on every server. We look like any drive, any storage device, and XDB just shows up. We also have a key value library API. It's RocksDB compatible, and there's an emerging NVMe KV standard that we're also supporting. This, of course, is the most efficient way to access a system for even higher performance. Okay, those IOs then come into the system come into XDP, it's all the same system. We basically treat blocks as a special type of key value pair. So everything runs through the engine in the same way. The first step is we compress it using very fast, very efficient compression. We have some unique IP here as well. Next is our hardware-based key value storage engine. Think of it as RocksDB on a chip. This is where the really hard work happens. You know, when you compress a block, you get an arbitrary size object that comes from that. Flash, of course, has fixed block sizes. So how do you match those things up? You merge them, you pack everything together, then you sort and index them for fast retrieval, then garbage collect. As updates get made, deletions, et cetera, you have to unpack everything and start the whole process over again. From a, well, this is what drives write amp and read amp and space amp through the roof. 
from a CPU point of view, the host makes compromises, so this won't take all the processing power. We've implemented extremely efficient algorithms and data structures, which are enormously computationally intensive. That's why XDP has equivalent of hundreds of Xeon Gold Core Rocks DB performance. That outputs to drive fail protection, where we manage data on SSDs. So if a drive fails, you can recover quickly. With none of the trade offs of RAID, we don't use hot spares, and rebuilds happen automatically in the background. Then, of course, everything can be encrypted. Now I'd like to talk about some of our interesting use cases um, from customers. Here's one from a top cloud service provider. It's their EBS-like solution for their customers. They're looking for higher density, higher density storage, lower cost, and a reduced downtime. It's a reoccurring theme. We hear this more and more from customers. Um, in this case, they want to use QLC SSDs to address the density question and a lower cost, um, but they're concerned, you know, as as they should be with QLC because they wear out faster. The more you write to them, the more they wear out. Like like tires on a car, the more you use them, they wear out. On the left, we have their current configuration, which is disaggregated storage using an open source distributed file system like Gluster. Disaggregated storage, as you know, has several advantages in terms of cost efficiency and scale. It's built using standard servers, NVMe SSDs, fast NICs, et cetera. The current TLC-based solution has 1.5 petabytes of usable capacity, but they, they suffered from more than 1,500 SSD-related failures or rebuilds per year. The PlyOps optimized configuration in the middle has three XDB cards per server with QLC SSDs behind them. With XDB and QLC, they're able to scale usable capacity by nearly 3x to 4.3 petabytes in the same footprint. That's incredible density. And of course, QLC is a lower cost. To get to 4.3 petabytes in their original configuration would take them 28 servers to accomplish. So XDP lets them avoid 40% additional cost if they were to stay with their original configuration. They chose XDP because it performs better than anything else that they've seen. And XDP gives them one solution that works for many different SLAs and lets them standardize storage across all their application servers. Here we have a large Redis in-memory database customer. DRAM, as we all know, is very expensive, but you get great performance. We're looking for ways to reduce cost. The current configuration on the left utilizes 10 servers for 10 Redis instances. Each server has six terabytes of DRAM-based storage. With this configuration, they're able to achieve 920K IOPS at approximately a millisecond of, of four nines latency per instance. With a, with a PlyOps optimized solution, looking at a single Redis on flash instance, they can achieve nearly the same IOPS performance at 910K and the same four nines latency of, of you know, just over one millisecond. We work closely with Redis Labs on the Redis on Flash solution and have a white paper on our website that you might be interested to check out. The net result is they get DRAM performance using Flash at 78% lower cost. More affordable capacity allows them to analyze months of data at a time, giving them better insights to their processes and with our built-in drive fail protection, their data is protected and they've eliminated their 
SSD server related failures. Got one more use case for you here. This is an e-tailer was pushing their internet as a service or infrastructure as a service provider for higher performance and they had very rigorous SLA requirements. They deployed NVMe SSDs, hoping to get that performance, but they weren't seeing what they expected to, to get out of their MySQL you know, instances. <clears throat> but the infrastructure as a service provider wanted to get more from its infrastructure investment without making software changes, satisfy the e-tailer um, and certainly improve you know, customer experience, right? We all know that slow performance um, you know, for an e-tailer can you know, lead to cart abandonment. Um, so their typical configuration on the left, a three node cluster delivered 150K queries per second, 31 terabytes of usable capacity using RAID 10 to reduce failover events. <clears throat> their storage architecture team found that with PlyOps XTP, they could achieve better performance at 157K queries per second and they got 58% more usable capacity at 49 terabytes, all with their data being fully protected. So they went from three servers to one server, two more SSDs, got 58% um, more usable capacity and, you know, and, and better performance. So from a cost perspective, they were able to save 54% compared to their original configuration. And lastly, we have another example here of a database service provider that provides MySQL database services. Their current solution entails three servers, each deployed with two SSDs <clears throat> using RAID 0, which as we know is fast, but there's no protection whatsoever. Um, with this configuration, they can support 15 database instances using 41 terabytes uh, to store user data. Uh, by using RAID 0, as I said, they got better performance, but they also experienced about 600 SSD-related failures per year. With the PlyOp solution in the center, they got a denser configuration in one server packed with eight SSDs that delivers 20 database instances for them with an increase in capacity up to 66 terabytes and they get dry fail protection for free. So looking at the numbers, costs go down by 50%, 33% 30 increase in the number of database instances they can accommodate, usable capacity increased by 66%, and they eliminated their SSD related failures due to dry fail protection. So I think those four, case studies really you know, exemplify many of the benefits that uh, PlyOps Extreme Data Processor brings to our customers. And with that, I'd like to open it up uh, for questions. And before we get into that, I'd like to introduce my colleague, Prasad Venkatachar, who's one of our esteemed subject matter experts. And so let's uh, open, open up for questions now. Hi, uh, Dan Frith here. I, I had a question at the start of the presentation. You talked a little bit about IoT workloads and trying to simplify those. Are you seeing much uptake in terms of edge computing or are you seeing that it's more about processing of the core? What, what does that look like in terms of you know, PlyOps' solution? Yeah, um, great question. Um, the customer base that we have today is, is primarily at, at the core um, and in large, uh, you know, cloud service providers. Uh, but there is interest. Um, we are getting queries about IoT, um, you know, at the edge and, and certainly, you know, the card, uh, you know, low profile card can fit in any server, um, works with SSDs. So anybody that's that's doing, um, you know, processing at the core, trying to manage lots of data that need, you know, high performance, 
it's a great fit there as well. Uh, maybe then I will add one point to that. Um, the one can, you know, requirement or the age is where uh, there's a lots of, uh, you know, right? Like the, typically these are smaller servers with lower storage capacity. So with the plaps using in the mix will expose the amount of uh, data that you can store it at the edge. So that, that's something we see, you know, some of the edge players as asking for, looking for it. I think we are actively engaging with that. The second is the ability to, you know, any of these edge is more for, as you pointed out, right, the IoT, right? Like you need a stream of data which is coming in, right? So the ability to store more data and process the data at that before this being passed onto the cloud or data centers, that's another requirement that we are uh, off late running into it. And that's where we are also helping it to, you know, uh, improve the, the edge processor, um, edge computing capabilities. Um, first of all, thanks. That was a great presentation there. Um, there was a kind of a fairly consistent theme of the types of workloads there um, that you're targeting currently, sort of databases, key value stores. Um, do you see a future where this may well expand out into more general purpose use cases or, or other workloads in the future? I'm not sure I'm fully understanding. I, I mean, obviously we're using a you know, key value store is part of the XDP's, you know, technology and, and engine um, to be as efficient as possible. Um, and it really doesn't, uh, I was gonna say, it really doesn't matter uh, what the application is using per se, because we can support a broad array of applications, but many applications are using key value, you know, in some form or another, because it is an, a, an efficient way, you know, to store and keep track of, of data. Um, yeah, I, I hope that that answers it. Um, Prasad, anything you want to add? Uh, no, uh, yeah, maybe I would add, what I would add is like, uh, so though our target market, I mean, based on how we accelerate all the random to sequential, that is where very, helpful for all the database analytics. But uh, to be honest, like, you know, so any flash-based workflow, uh, which needs a faster uh, data access with a lower latency and the higher capacities is we, we find that is a sweet spot. Target. Back, you know, so. so Max Marcilla, I have a question here and it may be a very stupid question because I'm not a Redis expert, but I was quite intrigued when you were presenting the use case with Redis and showing that you are going from system which has six terabytes of RAM, uh, assuming that it's an in-memory uh, database. And with the Plyops use case, you are using six TB. I don't know if it was RAM or if it was capacity from the Plyops side, and then using SSDs. So that kind of triggered the question to me, if what you're doing there is kind of replacing persistent memory or if it has anything to do with that, if you're competing with Optane or whatever, you know, it's kind of in, got me puzzled somehow. If you can explain what's going on there in the Redis setup. Yeah, let me let me give you a, you know my, my response, and then um, uh, Prasad can can add further to it. Um, if I understood your your question correctly, I mean we're basically eliminating the 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 DRAM right as the the storage unit, if you will, for Redis. It is an in memory you know database and um, and replacing it right with with flash SSDs and achieving you know virtually the same level of performance, same level of four nine latencies at you know I think it was seventy eight percent you know reduction in cost. And all the IOs are coming from the flash. It's not cached you know in a in a, another DRAM layer. So I think ninety uh, high ninety percent of the IOs are all being served um, you know out of the flash. Uh, and, and so that's that's amazing, I think. Uh, yeah, no, uh, I think Seth has covered. Yeah, so we, I mean, our value prop on the Redis is more about like, you know, so if, you know, it's a, we have a running into a recent customer where the amount of data that you could store for doing any sort of analytics with the in-memory is that for that customer requirement is, I mean, for the, that customer, they can only do it for one week but the execs is asking, I need to go back to six months of data. I can't make a decision of past one week of data. 
how do you expand that kind of a you know footprint in from one week to uh, right like you know go to six months so that is where our solution will be of very immense benefit because you can't keep adding more servers to go from six terabyte all the way up to you know let's say for six months like you know um, maybe from 10 servers to 100 servers so that's you know from cost prohibitive and operationally very complex so that's where redis on flash with fly apps will able to meet the challenges of you know uh, higher capacity of data where execs can go back to six months of data and this is all again like you know economically scalable as well so they are able to store huge amount of data up to let's say you know maybe from go from a six terabyte all the way up to 100 terabyte still everything served at the close to the dram speeds so thereby you're not compromising on the, uh, the performance but you're helping immensely in terms of like how much amount of data you can serve for any of the the analytics or a business insights you want to generate and the th third factor is it will be you know immense benefit in terms of the cost reduction yeah, thank you. I think it will be interesting to see the architecture of how this changes. If you have anything on the website, that will be really cool. Thank you. Yeah, we do have we do have a white paper there. We work with Redis Labs on the Redis on Flash solution, um, and I think they were you know pretty blown away with what's possible with um, with PlyApp. So you can check that out, um, or we'd be happy to send it to you as well. This is Alistair Cook. I saw in one of your examples, you showed uh, PlyOps being used to then be a platform on top of which a scale out storage solutions was built. And I think this heads towards uh, Jason's earlier question. Can you elaborate a little bit more on what the storage solution was that was built on top of these multiple PlyOps units to be that elastic block store like storage for the cloud provider? So I think that was the, was that maybe the first one, right? The um, using using um, Gluster open source distributed file system. Okay, so it was Gluster on top of multi yeah. nodes. Correct. Right. And then it's it's whatever you want as iSCSI, NFS kind of targets on, on top of Gluster. Well, um, oh, no, it's, it's Gluster. No, it's, I mean, it's XDP, it, right, on top of that with the storage built, you know, behind the extreme data processing. Well, Thanks for uh, joining us. Uh, it was uh, great to meet everybody. Appreciate the great questions. Um, hope you got a lot out of it. And um, we've got a lot of information on our new website. Uh, feel free to uh, check out plyops.com. And um, thanks again. Mm -hmm.